Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service. More Santa Ana winds. Well, let's get through this first event through Wednesday. We expect the winds to increase on Wednesday and become fairly widespread. That's the dry Santa Ana wind. And that wind will continue at least through Wednesday evening before we finally see a break of light winds on Thursday and Friday. Though the winds do come on shore on Friday, so they become stronger in the deserts on Friday. We're looking for another Santa Ana wind for late Sunday into Tuesday of next week. Let's look at some details. The summary, the driest start to the water year, so since October 1st across Southern California. Santa Ana winds, a prolonged event that we've been dealing with for the past two days, continue through Wednesday. Some of our stronger winds could occur on Wednesday much less wind on Thursday and it becomes onshore, but we have to deal with that offshore flow Thursday morning. Now there is some uncertainty. We could see cloud cover and some light precipitation spotty on Friday into Saturday, but overall uh, the, what is certain is the winds become onshore and gusty westerly winds in our deserts on Friday. The next Santa Ana wind looks likely for late Sunday through Tuesday. Now, I want to remind everyone that Santa Ana winds are common in December, January. In fact, we see the peak in January. And some of the stronger winds, as indicated on the left-hand side in orange, occur in January. So left-hand side is courtesy of the U.S. Forest Service. Right-hand side, courtesy of UC San Diego Scripps. Now, this is not normal. 5% of normal for Southern California in the brown shaded it's the driest start to a rainy season or water year in San Diego. Okay, what it also means when you have Santa Ana and dry conditions is it can get cold at night, especially in the places that have no wind to keep the temperature mixed up. Some of our locations in the valleys were in the upper 30s. Some locations in the interior valleys were below 32. Look at those really cold temperatures in the Big Bear region below 10 Fahrenheit. Now, so far today, January 14th, here are the peak winds. The strongest wind gusts were in the Cajon Pass as usual and the San Gregorio Pass. We had some gusts 55 to 65, so moderately strong San Ana wind. Now across the San Diego region, you can see some wind made it all the way down near the coast in San Diego where we had gusts 20, 30 miles per hour. The strongest winds were 50 to 60 in the I-8 pass and our usual strongest wind, Cuyamaca Peak, 74 at Sill Hill. Now the minimum humidity today uh, was below 10% most areas, so just very dry air all the way to the coast as shown here. All right, in the short term, uh, we're dealing with more fire weather conditions. So tonight through Wednesday, the areas outlined in red are critical and those areas are in the red flag warning. The fuel moisture is shown here and we can see we are near record levels in Southern California mountains for how dry it is. Some of the detail on the weather models show an increase in winds Wednesday morning, as shown here. The strongest winds in the area shaded in red. Now the good news here is that on Thursday, I talked about the winds being much lighter and becoming lightly on shore. Much lighter, weaker winds all areas Thursday. Now we get into Friday, not only do we see increasing cloud cover, higher humidity, so we also uh, see an increase in winds now in the desert areas instead of along the coast valleys and mountains. So the stronger winds relax everywhere, but increase over the deserts. This is what we see in red flag conditions, and this is what we expect through Wednesday evening. The strong winds, the low humidity, and of course the dry, near record dry vegetation that's in place. The latest forecast for winds, the orange shaded is where we expect those wind corridors and Santa Ana winds 
those northeast winds gusting up around 60 miles per hour. Most areas in the green shaded gusting between 30 and 40 miles per hour. So moderate to locally strong Santa Ana winds through Wednesday. The areas highlighted in red here are the most concerned for fire weather conditions. So this is where we see our most severe combination of dry, low humidity and strong Santa Ana winds through Wednesday. The low humidity is shown here. The low humidity is everywhere. So not everyone is experiencing the stronger Santa Ana winds, the offshore flow, but everyone's experiencing the low humidity through Wednesday. And the cold temperatures. This is a look at the cold temperatures uh, that will occur early Wednesday morning. So another cold start to the day. On Friday, we see temperatures cooling off along the coast. Some cloud cover and that onshore flow helping cool things off. So good conditions for fighting the wildfires. The weather pattern. It's very amplified right now and kind of a mess, uh, but it, storms are blocked across the entire Pacific as shown here. So we have the Arctic air continuing to spill into the upper plains and Great Lakes, and we've got that surface high pressure, high to low, bringing the offshore flow or the Santa Ana wind. The weather system that's broken away from the jet stream, closed, cut off low, drifts over us on Friday. That'll increase the winds in our deserts on Friday. Now, when we look forward to next week, we see another development of very cold air coming down in the Great Lakes and Northeast, Arctic blast, if you will. So that starts building high pressure again at the surface late Sunday to develop that offshore flow Santa Ana wind. Now the offshore flow Santa Ana winds, so winds blowing from northeast to southwest, winds blowing from desert to ocean, really start to set up uh, early next week, Sunday night and Monday as that cold Arctic air goes, goes by to our east. The outlook is not looking good, however. Dry across just not just California, but all of the west as we go through and into late January as shown here. Now when we look further out, all the way towards the end of January, still a good chance of below average in Southern California and milder than normal. Now let's take a look at the other impacts of Santa Ana winds and all these dry conditions and low humidity. So with the lack of precipitation, not only is San Diego ranked one, but so are other areas in Southern California as the driest start. The drought has expanded. So over the past couple months, we've seen a significant change and increase, most noticeable, Southwest California. Soil is also drying out across the South. So limited summer thunderstorm monsoon activity and the dry fall and winter is really making our soil condition dry now. Temperatures have continued to be warmer, warmer than average across interior Southern California as shown here, with near normal for the immediate coast since the start of the rainy season in October. The snowpack is now decreasing, unfortunately. It was over 100% of average. Central Southern Sierra the difference in the weather pattern now in January is that snow and rain is not occurring anywhere in California. So we're starting to lose snowpack and we're losing ground because January is a wet and snowy month. So when you don't have precipitation in January, you start falling below normal. Here are some resources, including the outlooks that I just showed. And you can also create your own maps showing low humidity, temperatures, and also the peak wind gusts. All right, everyone, stay safe. Always follow the weather conditions each day, including the red flag messages. And of course, follow any local authority information that you do receive about evacuations.